Hi, I'm Shannon Perry, and welcome to episode two of Conversations with Shannon. Today, we're going to talk about the patches on my dad's backpack. Thanks, Shannon. So, um, you know, this is a backpack that I put together from, it's really modified from one of the Osprey uh, 65 liter backpacks. Um, obviously, that's a bigger backpack than most people carry. That's a subject for another day. I'm going to get into why I did that and what this is. It's been heavily modified um, and it does a specific thing for a specific reason. But today, I didn't want to really talk about the technical side. I want to talk about the more personal stuff that's, that's associated with this backpack. So, um, if you look on the, the top of it here, you'll see a whole series of patches. Well, those patches go back, some of them are 50 years old. I've, probably backpacked in 50 countries by now, Shannon, something like that. And uh, uh, these go back to my first trips right after university. So that's the majority of what you'll see on, on the backpack. And, you know, on the bottom you'll see places like Nunavut and Greenland and Indonesia and Malaysia and, you know, lots of places where I've, I've been over the years. There's one in particular on the top that is obviously looks a little out of place and, uh, uh, might be thought of as a little unusual, but it's this one right here. That patch is now about almost 80 years old, and that belonged to my dad. My dad was part of the 8th Army Air Force, uh, stationed in East Angle, uh, Anglesey in, in England during the Second World War. Um, I've been thinking about my dad a lot, Shan, in the last couple of years, and uh, I decided when I just decided to do the Camino, uh, to put one of his back, one of his uniform patches on my backpack and bring it with me. I have, you know, such deep respect for the greatest generation and what they did and what they handed us. And to be candid, it's been one of my, you know, the things that bothers me every day the most is that my generation has done so little to improve upon what they did. And so for me, this is one of the things I'm going to be wrestling with as I'm walking on the Camino. Um, so this is really a story of a typical, what I understand to be a typical thing people call a Camino Miracle, where, um, you know, I put this patch on, I said, well, if I'm going to do this, I better make sure I understand a little bit about the background about this. And I knew a little bit from my dad, but I didn't know a lot. So I started doing a little bit of research just to make sure I could speak knowledgeably. And immediately, I, I, I googled um, 8th Army Air Force, Barry St. Edmunds, and up came a, a big document called The Friendly Invasion. Well, it turned out that was some of the foundational research that went into this new series that just started on television called Masters of the Air, the thing that Hanks and Spielberg have done, which is all about the 8th Army Air Force. It's about a specific group uh, called that's uh, stationed down at another base called Fort Babbitts. But in the process of doing that, between you and I, we've been able to trace back and found out all kinds of things about my dad that we had no idea about or I might know a little piece of the story, but didn't know the whole story. So, for instance, it, it turned out that the base he was on originally, Lavinum, was the base where the movie 12 O'Clock High, a lot of the stories come from. Um, that's important because some of the stories could actually, you can interpret them, one of them was about my dad. If you watch that movie, there's this one set of scenes where there's a sergeant in the office who's with the clerk, and he's continuously being promoted and demoted for various infractions. Well, my dad told us the story for years. He used to be known as Bud Perry. And Bud would get promoted up to corporal, and sooner than not, he'd get demoted back down to private. Up and down he went throughout the war. And that, that story appears in the movie. All the planes with the big uh, triangle A in the back are, are planes that are supposedly stationed on the base and the and the plane Piccadilly Lily that features in the movie and in the television series that came after was on that base. So um, it was just fascinating to sort of see all the history. When I was 16 and my sister was 13, we traveled to England and went to visit a lot of these places. So I sort of had a memory of them. One of the things he did was take us to a very famous poem. I believe it was called The White Swan, which was bicycle distance from Latham. <clears throat> where there's a famous wall where the flyers would sign it. The part that, that never really comes clear when, in, uh, when I talked to him when he was alive was the fact that at that time with the 8th Army Air Force, basically none of the crews survived. So all the people he was living with 
would be killed during the war during the period of time he was there. And so he never talked about it, but you just get a sense about what this was really like and maybe why we never heard heard all the stories. It was uh, it was uh, yeah, quite something to sort of hear. Um, I will relate one story, which is the whole story about being promoted and demoted. That definitely did happen to him. And uh, it involved a variety of things. One involved a hedge, a dark night, and a trip back from the pub where he didn't make it back before before curfew. I think that cost him once. A second time where in an act of chivalry, he apparently rescued a bunch of young ladies from the clutches of some overly uh, amorous sergeants on the base and promptly got demoted a second time. We did go and visit some of his old girlfriends when we were we were in England, and I understand how the phrase, the friendly invasion occurred. This was a very awkward trip because here you had, you know, my mom and my dad meeting the ex-girlfriend and husband. It was deaf, even at 16, I knew this conversation was awkward and it became more so when on backing out of their driveway, my dad knocked over the guy's uh, mailbox and basically stopped to get out to help to maybe pay for something. And, uh, the gentleman made it quite clear that he should just keep driving. So anyway, the friendly invasion became a story that I didn't know before. And I really now do know in part because of getting prepared to go on the Camino. So that's the story about, uh, about the backpack and some of the, uh, some of the badges on it. And you said you would tell me about the badges on the lower so, backpack. So Radar, you, you've seen this backpack. We used to call it Shan Radar because she would always call me whenever I was on the road and uh, on, on a trip. And frequently, she, you would do it literally as the wheels would touch down on a plane and I was on the runway. You, you'd call me. On the, and my phone would be ringing before the plane stopped moving. It happened over and over and over again. So is there anything unusual you notice about that backpack, Shan? A close look at it. Can't figure it out? No. So Shannon, every one of the stickers on this backpack yeah. is a country where you called them. Oh. <laughs> every one of those patches is a place where you called me from the time you were three years old. <laughs> and so I got thinking about this. You know, you've been so helpful to me in getting ready for this whole thing. And we've talked about you doing a Camino sometime, right? Well, I really truly believe in what I've seen online. People talk about it, you know, you don't have to go to Spain to do a Camino. It's the Camino's everywhere. So I'd like you to have this backpack. And those poles and this hat. And I think you should walk your own Camino right here in Tiny Township. And walk along with us. So an opportunity to you know experience this alongside of us. So that's what the backpack, that's a very old backpack. It's patched up, it's barely, you know, it's seen better days, let's say, but every place on that backpack is a place where you called me. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome and uh, Buen Camino. I hope it's, a, it's a, good, a good trip. Well, that's the end of this video, I think. Um, in the next one, we're gonna talk a bit about some of the unusual things about that I found out in training for the Camino about backpacks and about what would work for me. Um, I think it's very unique and specific to uh, you know me and my my body shape, but I think it's a bit contrary to what else I've read online. Some of the things that I found out that are that are are different than what I see other people saying. So we'll put that onto uh, onto the next video. In the meantime, to everybody out there that's going to be walking, buen Camino. <laughs>